Hey, welcome back. We're at Lamentations chapter 4, looking at verses 7 to 9 this morning. Here is our reading. Now, this is a chapter that deals a lot with the desolation of Jerusalem after the invasion, and then the Babylonians have left now after they wrecked everything. Really, this isn't the Babylonians' fault. This is God's people who refused to turn to him, and now we see the result. Verse 7, Her Nazarites were brighter than snow and whiter than milk. They were more ruddy in body than rubies, like sapphire in their appearance. Now their appearance is blacker than soot. They go unrecognized in the streets. Their skin clings to their bones. It has become as dry wood. Those slain by the sword are better off than those who die of hunger. For these pine away, stricken for lack of the fruits of the field. So here's a people who used to have everything. They had everything, and now they're reduced to roaming around and trying to find something to eat. That's where they are. They are looking for a fig, uh, an apple. They're looking for something to eat. They just can't hardly find anything. That Their civilization has been crushed uh, because they lost their pathway. And so here's this picture of devastation. The people are, are full of stress. They're worn out. They're hungry. These aren't people driving around with air-conditioned cars and they're so tubby they can't hardly get out of their vehicle. This is not, this is a people who are scraping to find a raisin to eat, okay? Because they have trusted in, in their material wealth and now they're reduced to the discipline of hunger. God will sometimes use this to help us clarify our thinking and we get too ab absorbed in the easy things of life and they satiated with food and sweets or whatever whatever the poison is, and all of us maybe have a poison, something that is uh, we're at risk of counting too highly. God wants us to have something better. And so here's a picture of people who he's reduced to this situation so they can rethink and reevaluate what's going on in their lives. We don't want that to happen to us. We want to get it right instead of learning uh, by our own mistakes. Let's learn from their mistakes, and let's make sure we're true to God's present purpose for us. So there's a lesson for us. Let's learn the lesson now and so instead of having to wait for God to remove our luxuries from us and be reduced to a thing where we're, we're kind of working through our life, we're trying to find a, a raisin to eat. Let's have our values in order before we have to come to a very, 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 very hard time and have to reevaluate our values at that time. Let's have our values right now and God will be with us in all that we face. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, as generations go, I suppose that our generation is one of the most wealthy, has had it the most easy of any generation, and here we are. And many of us have lost our pathway, our spiritual space. Help us, Lord, to turn to you. Help us to be people who will plead to you, Lord, for the gift of change and, and heart change, repentance. Change us, Lord, and then help us not to be reduced to the lowest rungs of poverty before we turn to you. Help us to turn to you right now. And Lord, you use us in whatever situation you're willing to have us in. Thank you for hearing our prayer, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So there's a discipline of hunger. I don't know about you, but I'd, I'd rather skip it. Let's, let's do God's work now while it's still day, because the night's coming when it will be much harder to do the work. God be with you and bless you this day.